everyone, it's a great pleasure to see you all again. And here is Asia News for today's episode with me, Vanessa. Indonesia won send signal of economic recovery at China International Import Expo. According to Zhao Hari Orat Mangung, Indonesian ambassador to China, that Indonesia hopes to seize the opportunity of the fifth China International Import Expo to showcase the country's products and send a signal that it is ready for the economic recovery after the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking during an interview with China Global Television Network, Orat Mangung noted business people from both China and other countries can broaden their horizon at the expo. Meanwhile, Indonesia also expects to send a signal economic recovery through the China International Import Expo. This is the showcase as well, showcase for China, yeah. showcase for Indonesia that is going to participate, showcase for other countries as well that are going to participate at the CIIE. And then judging from my experience, five, five times I've been participating at the, at the CIIE, uh, it's opened the horizon. It's opened the horizon for the participating uh, businessmen who was there looking at the opportunities offered by China. And then at the same time, uh, the Chinese businessmen looking at the opportunities opened by participating countries at the CIIE and of course transactions being made during the expo. So I do hope that this is the signal. We will send the uh, CIIE will send the positive signal to the international market as well that we are ready to recover after the pandemic of COVID-19. The five-day expo, the world's first dedicated import exhibition, is taking place in Shanghai with hundreds of major enterprises and industry giants from around the world, including Indonesia, participating in the event. Looking towards the economic cooperation between the country and China, Orat Mang mentioned that the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which Indonesia ratified earlier this year, together with the China International Import Expo, is also expected to help promote bilateral trade. Malaysian leaders start election campaigns in tight race. Malaysian political leaders began their election campaigning for what is said to be a close race with incumbent Prime Minister Ismail Sabri facing off with veterans Anwar Ibrahim and Muhyiddin Yassin. Polls and analysts say no single party or coalition will win a simple majority in the 222-seat parliament and that opposing alliances will have to come together to form the next government. Around 21 million Malaysians are eligible to vote in the November 19 election with inflation and recent political instability on the top of their minds in the backdrop of a slowing economy. Malaysia has the three premiers since the last election in 2018. The election comes as the Malaysian economy is expected to ease due to a global slowdown, impeding a recovery from a pandemic-induced slump. Inflation is also rising, with the Malaysian Central Bank increasing interest rates for the fourth straight time. Indonesia conducts security drills ahead of G20 leaders' meeting. Indonesian armed forces launched a two-day security exercise near Nusa Dua before the G20 summit takes place in Bali. The group of 20 meeting of world leaders on November 15 to 16 is expected to be dominated by tensions over Russia's invasion of Ukraine on February 24, which Moscow called a special military operation to demilitarize its neighbor. Russian President Vladimir Putin may miss G20 leaders' summit, his Indonesian counterpart Joko Widodo and host of the bloc of major economies told media. Indonesia has also invited the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, who has said he will not take part if Putin does. Several other world leaders, including U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping, are expected to attend. Australian Foreign Minister meet with Thailand Prime Minister to discuss human trafficking issues.
Australia and Thailand are set to join forces in tackling human trafficking following a meeting between Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha and Foreign Minister Penny Wong during her Southeast Asia visit. Thailand Prime Minister's office statement said during Wong's visit, both countries also signed a pact on training to counter human trafficking, climate change, and technology transfer. On today's trip is Wong's first state visit to Thailand as she sought deeper engagement with Southeast Asia. Indonesia publishes the final report of the Sriwijaya Air Accident Investigation in 2021. An official said Indonesian investigators have released the final report of the investigation, the crash of the Sriwijaya airplane in 2021, which killed all 62 people on board. <laughs> The Sriwijaya air crash was Indonesia's third commercial plane crash in just over six years and shone a spotlight on the country's poor air safety record. Under international standards, a final report would normally have been issued within a year of the January 9, 2021 crash, but Indonesia's National Transportation Safety Committee, KNKT, said the pandemic had made it harder for its team to travel for the investigation. Oni Suryo Wibo and KNKT investigator told Reuters that the final report had been published on November 10. An interim report showed in January that the 26-year-old Boeing COBAN 737-500 was on a domestic route from Jakarta to Pontianak in Indonesian Borneo when it had an imbalance in engine thrust that eventually led the plane into a sharp roll and then a final dive into the Java Sea. Japan hosts multilateral display of naval unity amid tensions in East Asia. Japan hosted its first international fleet review for seven years, with ships from 12 other nations in a show of unity as North Korea fires records numbers of missiles and China increases its pressure on Taiwan. The naval parade in Sagami Bay near Tokyo involved 38 vessels, 18 from friendly countries such as the United States, South Korea, Britain, Australia, Singapore, India and Thailand. 33 aircraft flew overhead, including submarine hunting patrol planes and helicopters. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida hosted dignitaries on the Izumo before flying the United States Navy aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan to meet Ambassador Ram Emanuel and senior Navy commanders. South Korea's decision to join Japan's event came as ties between the neighbors improved after a spat over compensation for wartime laborers and Korean women forced to work in Japanese military brothels, which had threatened to derail closer cooperation between the United States allies. China, which has criticized Japan's defense spending plans, declined an invitation to join the review. Russia was not invited because of its invasion of Ukraine. South Koreans gather for a candlelit vigil to remember Halloween crash victims. Thousands attended a candlelight vigil in South Korea to mourn the victims of a deadly Halloween crash that has killed at least 156 and injured 187. Held near the Seoul City Hall, candles and black ribbons were distributed to the participants by the organizers, activist group which has been holding weekly rallies against President Yoon suk yeols administration. South Korea is witnessing the sacrifice of the young people. As a mother of two young children, I feel forever sorry. The vigil came at the end of the week of national mourning declared by Yoon, which saw numerous altars for the public to offer tributes appears across the country. A huge crowd celebrating Halloween in the popular Itaewon district had surged into an alley on October 29 before a crowd crash erupted in one particularly narrow and sloping alley.
Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia arrives in Phnom Penh for meetings of leaders on cooperation in East Asia. Prime Minister Samdek Theko Hun Sen of the Kingdom of Cambodia and Chinese Premier Li Keqiang arrived in Phnom Penh for a series of leaders' meetings on East Asia cooperation and an official visit to Cambodia. Cambodian Deputy Prime Minister Hong Nam Hong and other senior Cambodian officials greeted the delegation at the airport. Honor guards lined up on both sides of a red carpet salute Li and local youths presented flowers to Li and his wife Cheng Hong and Chinese ambassador to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, Deng Si Jung, were also at the airport to welcome the delegation. Li noted that China and ASEAN are comprehensive, strategic partners and each other's largest trading partner. China expects the East Asia leaders' meeting to focus on development and cooperation, uphold multilateralism and free trade, adhere to open cooperation and mutual benefit, jointly preserve secure and smooth global industrial and supply chains, enable parties to join hands to address global challenges and inject new impetus into promoting regional economic integration, as well as safeguarding peace, stability, development and prosperity in the region and beyond. The ASEAN summit will take place from November 10 to November 13, 2022. South Korean military recovers debris of North Korean missile. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said South Korean ship had recovered debris believed to be part of the North Korean short-range ballistic missile that landed off the South's coast. It was the first time a North Korean ballistic missile had landed near South Korean waters. The Joint Chiefs of Staff official said the South Korean Navy rescue vessel used an underwater proof to recover the parts which are being analyzed. North Korea's military said that recent South Korea-United States military exercises were an open provocation and dangerous war drill as the South said it had recovered parts of the North Korean missile that landed off its coast. North Korea test fired multiple missiles including a possible failed intercontinental ballistic missile and hundreds of artillery shells into the sea as South Korea and United States carried out six-day air drills. China International Import Expo exhibitors encouraged by China's promise of more openings. Exhibitors from home and abroad attending the ongoing 5th China International Import Expo voiced their optimism about development prospects in China as President Xi Jinping underscored that China remains committed to the fundamental national policy of opening up to the outside world at the opening ceremony. Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and Chairman of the Central Military Commission, delivered a keynote speech titled Working Together for a Bright Future of Openness and Prosperity via Video Link. The exhibitor said that Xi's speech conveyed to the world China's firm determination to further open up on a new journey, injecting strong confidence in a bright future of openness and prosperity. China will amplify the interplay between domestic and international markets and resources strive to create new opportunities for the world with its own development and contribute its share to building an open global economy. She noted in his speech that China will work with all countries and all parties to share the opportunities on its vast market from its institutional opening up and from deepened international cooperation. Exhibitors said that the pledge is full of hope and makes the whole world excited to share in China's huge market being beneficial to all countries. Well, we hope you enjoy all the news for today and we'll see you again sooner. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely weekend.